Hi, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in the state of New York. This is a big state, and it's a state with an intensely local forecast. The climate right now in Buffalo is different from central New York, is different from New York City, and those differences are going to become more pronounced over the next 30 years. This whole area is very sensitive. It's looking at a wide range of climate outcomes. So if you're in a bordering state, please don't look at the New York forecast and assume you're looking at similar projections for your area. FYI, I'm scheduled to have New Jersey up on January 7th. Just give me a little more time and you will have all the info you need for your home state. I promise I'm going to get to all of them. But back to New York. This state has such a wild range of projections. I had to break it down into part one today, which is going to focus on everything away from the ocean, and part two, where we'll look at New York City and Long Island. Inland New York has such a positive and challenging and really complicated forecast. So in part two, we're going to look at the extremely serious challenges that will be faced by some of the most populous and most vulnerable parts of the state. Here's what we're going to see today. First, we're going to look at the freeze-free period, see how that'll change, how it'll impact seasonality. Then we'll look out summer heat and duration, and then winter lows through the lens of plant hardiness zones. After that, I'll give you a heads up about predicted changes to precipitation. Let's get going. So starting with our projected changes in the freeze-free period, let's look over to the fourth edition of the NCA. Here, this is zoomed in really intense so that you can see the counties in New York. I'm gonna give you some information about what these confusing different colored maps mean. So this is looking at changes to the spring thaw. This is looking at changes to the fall frost. The key is the same, where the darker the color, the longer the time. But for these two maps, you can imagine time is going in different directions. So as we get darker on this map, the spring is coming earlier. And as we get darker on this map, the frost is coming later. These very light yellows are less than a week, a little bit darker, about a week, light orange, two weeks, dark orange, three weeks. So looking at the spring, you see that you are expecting spring to come a week to two weeks earlier by 2050 across most of New York, but that there's tremendous variation in when the fall will come, where most of the state by area is looking at fairly little change to the fall frost, maybe five days wiggle room. But over here by the Great Lakes, there's going to be a two to three week longer summer. We noticed that also by the sea and in some of our more mountainous areas. So as we're talking about these uh, changes across the state, already you're starting to see the enormous diversity of climate outcomes, where we could be talking about a two week change to the frost free period or a six week change to the frost free period depending on where exactly in the state you're looking. So that gives us a little window into our changes in seasonality, our changes in seasonal patterns. When does the spring come? When does the fall come? But to get a richer picture of what it's gonna feel like, we really need to look deeper and look at changes within the seasons. So we're gonna look at this map to see how summer's projected to change around 2050. We're gonna look at the USDA heat map. Give me just a second to pull that up. All right, so if we look here, <clears throat> let's pull up the key. <clears throat> this map is showing summer heat historically from 1980 to 2009. <clears throat> Excuse me there. You can see that New York right now enjoys pretty cool summers, that most of the state, you've had less than a month with uh, really true heat with days over 86. And let's see what's gonna happen in a low emission scenario for 2050. We noticed some pretty dramatic changes, right? We're gonna go back to the key. This sort of greenish yellow color, which we see in the moderately low elevation areas, that's looking at up to 60 days over 86 in the summer. And this true yellow here, which we see say around Rochester. And as we get in closer to the sea, these lower elevation areas, you're looking at up to 90 days over 86 every summer. There's pretty good conservation of the cool in the higher elevation areas, but still it's a dramatic range of outcomes. 
And if you kind of overlay that, if you remember the last map that we looked at with seasonality, we saw that um, Rochester had this big change in seasonality and it has this big change in summer heat. And Albany has this big change in summer heat, but not a big change in seasonality. So just by putting these two layers of data together, we're starting to see a further diversity of outcome. And I think that we need some more information too to build up your picture of what's gonna to happen to the landscape. We really need to add another level, go another level deeper and add a third layer of data. So we're gonna look now at projected changes to winter lows, which we'll interpret from plant hardiness zones. Let's get over to that now. All right, so now let's check out the key. We're looking at our contemporary plant hardiness zones in New York, which you guys have a crazy client of plant hardiness zones here. You go from zone four all the way down five, six, seven here by New York City. And let's look at how this is gonna shift. And this, I think I'm gonna show you the back and forth a little bit because it, it's really pretty interesting. Looking at the low emission scenario for 2050, major changes in the southern half of the state, right? And let's focus in on the Great Lakes for a second as we go back to the historical data. Big change to this whole area definitely impacting the New York cities that are on the Great Lakes. They're really behaving more like Midwestern states uh, do, more like the Great Lakes region than like this sort of New England region. I think that that's a big part of understanding this intense diversity of microclimate that's forming up in New York, is that this is really a different climactic zone than here, than here. So you've got a lot of intersecting factors and I'm, I'm gonna try and calm myself down. <laughs> As we look at these changes, we can see that uh, it's still gonna be cold enough for snow in most of the state as you try and imagine your future. This dark green, there's still gonna be snow. It might be less frequent, but it's still gonna snow there. Up here in the north central part of the state, pretty typical winter. It's a winter where you're still gonna be able to do sugaring. In the Great Lakes area and down here by the sea, you're probably looking at fairly rare snow events relative to today. And if we think about Buffalo, we can start to think about what a big change that is, that it's moving into an area where there's gonna be relatively little snow, where precipitation is going to start falling as winter rain. So before I talk more about precipitation, I wanna just point out the reality that the size of some of these changes can be alarming. We're looking at two zone shifts in some areas and no zone shifts in some areas in New York. And these big shifts, those two zone shifts, they are alarming, they're serious. But I wanna take a minute to acknowledge that those big changes that like what we see around the Great Lakes are not necessarily shifting towards unpleasant climates. We're talking about shifts towards climates that we might see today in say Virginia. So I wouldn't panic when I see these big changes, but I would prepare because what we have here is a great challenge. These changes are coming faster than landscapes can change naturally. So to create our best possible future, our best 2050, we need to think about how we can support these landscape transitions. There's lots of really important gardening and land management work to do. And the federal government is beginning to release information on recommended infill species, new species to bring to the area. So we're gonna be able to do this massive work with guidance from scientists at the USDA. I just want to put a little note of reality there because those changes are big, but back to the forecast. Let's talk some more about the snow. Let's talk about precipitation. In these areas where you're expecting less snow, you should note that precipitation isn't going away. There's not a forecast for decreased precipitation in this state. What we're looking at is precipitation that's more likely to fall as rain, Buffalo especially. Most people, when they think of Buffalo, they think of snow. These are like identity issues. 
but much of that snow is going to shift towards winter rain as we move towards and past mid-century. You should expect to see more conservation of a typical winter, a winter marked by snow cover, in the north central part of the state. And all across the state, you should expect more extreme storms and you should prepare for more extreme storms. This state is within the area projected to be at risk from more frequent and larger diameter hail on top of all the storms you're used to. So let's take a minute to wrap this up. When you consider the New York forecast, you really need to look at the data right where you are. This is going to be a state with such an incredible diversity of microclimates, such incredible landscape diversity. Anything you want to grow, it looks like you'll be able to find a place to grow it in New York. There are challenges to be sure, particularly related to extreme weather and increased hail. But if you're interested in meeting these challenges, you can really imagine what kind of a place you want in terms of seasonality, summer highs and winter lows, and look for a fit on those intersecting maps. And if you're anchored, if you're in the place you wanna be, this forecast gives you the information you need about what changes to expect so that you can get ready for any adjustments you'll need to make. The challenges ahead are big, don't get me wrong, but there's so much good here. The water outlook all across the state is good. The state has just incredible potential. This is Dr. Schoening with AR signing out. I'll get part two out for New York in the next couple of weeks. Please like and subscribe. Help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.